I've been very lucky. One of my greatest mentors was Brian Mulligan. He was my first manual therapy teacher, together with Robin McKenzie. And after Brian had developed sufficient of his own work to start teaching his own material, I took over from him teaching the extremity section of the uh, New Zealand Minip Therapist's diploma, postgraduate diploma. And this led to my invitations to, to teach in a number of places. And then, of course, I later became one of Mulligan's accredited uh, Mulligan concept teachers. And I have to say, it's been a wonderful ticket for travel for me, and I have taught in, in lots of very strange places. I've been to India four times, and I'll never forget the first time I went was a course in New Delhi, held at the New Delhi Physiotherapy School, and they were so delighted to be having an overseas physiotherapist, and there were big banners up outside the school welcoming Dr. Barbara Hetherington, because all physios are known as doctors in India. And I had had some communication prior to going and had stipulated a maximum of 24 physiotherapists on my course. However, with some faxes, and this was actually extended to 30. And I thought, oh, how on earth am I going to supervise 30 students on my own, postgraduate students, for two days? However, the day arrived, and there were no fewer than 45 there for the course, and nobody was going to be turned away, believe you me. And so we set out, started the course, but... A little interruption, and there are lots of interruptions when you teach in India. The audiovisual department had to get set up, so they came with their cameras and their white umbrellas and their lights. And meantime, the temperature outside got hotter and hotter. There was no air conditioning in the building. There were some fans. It was over forty degrees. We had. We had lights, we had umbrellas, we had we had everything. We had every minute of that course videoed. I had the misfortune to wear a navy blue polo shirt that day, and it really does look a very striped shirt when you see it in these videos. <laughs> I was saturated. Just about every shot I've got, I'm either holding, standing at the lectern, holding a water bottle, or I'm standing at the lectern with a hand towel drying my hands ready to touch a patient, a, a therapist, or demonstrate something. It was an amazingly awful course because the women would not, of course, take their, expose their bodies in front of the men in any way at all. So a man would take his shirt off for me to demonstrate a technique. Then the men would run to one room to practice on their own and the women would stay in the room that I was teaching. And so I would then have to scuttle between the two rooms to supervise. And to say I was exhausted at the end of the day was uh, sort of an understatement. And we had another day to go, but at least I had the foresight to wear a white polo shirt the next day. <laughs> a few years ago I was teaching in Finland, where I taught actually for, for eight or nine years once a year. And my partner and I had decided that we would like to visit Estonia. And I had rather cheekily looked through the WCPT website and found the name of the president of the Estonian Physiotherapy Association and wrote to him and suggested, said that we were visiting and uh, suggested that if any of them would like to meet with me since I was had been involved with IFOMPT and WCPT, I would be very happy to meet them and mentioned that I was going to be teaching a Mulligan course in Helsinki. He wrote back very quickly and said, the day that you're visiting happens to be the day that we have planned a seminar and we have a visiting lecturer from Finland coming. We would like you to join the program. You've been allocated three quarters of an hour this time. You choose your subject, please advise. So that was very nice. So I did that. And he met us, and he had very good English. Tallinn is a lovely city. 
and he told me that unfortunately the other speaker from Finland was sick and hadn't come, so the show was mine. And instead of speaking for three quarters of an hour, could I please make it two and a half? Oh, yes, not a problem. Then he told me that none of them spoke English, and that not to worry that he would be the translator. So we did just that. We had two and a half hours of impromptu with translation, and it was delightful. I loved every minute of it.